morning and welcome. It's so good to see you here on this holiday weekend. Usually I'm thinking all of us would be meeting at the beach, right? Somewhere relaxing at a picnic. But that's coming, right, Miss Christie? We're going to get there. A picnic, right? Welcome to those of you who are joining us uh, online this morning. Um, I'm Pastor Jenny and we're here at St. Paul's in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> it is Pentecost Sunday. Anybody know what the word penta stands for? You math people. Five, right? So Pentecost is 50 days since Easter. So that's what today is, the celebration of Pentecost. It's an ancient um, <clears throat> Jewish holiday, actually, that we just kind of swiped for ourselves, too, in the Christian world. Uh, they celebrate Pentecost for, some, for other reasons. But today, we are, um, we're going to be hearing about the Holy Spirit, because on Pentecost, do you remember what went up on the heads of the disciples? Do you remember that? There may be images here to help us. <laughs> Tongues of fire. Isn't it beautiful, all this red? Yeah. So this is a holiday in which we celebrate the birth of the Holy Spirit in the church because Jesus said, when I leave you, I'm going to leave an advocate with you, the Holy Spirit. And so one of the pastors I was talking with said that she used to practice this with kids. She would have them... Uh, get a balloon and blow it up nice and tight and then draw a picture of their church on it and then she said look at how big and beautiful your church is filled with the holy spirit the breath of god she said okay now let that air out let's see what happens if that holy spirit goes what happens to the size of that picture on the balloon it goes shrinking down she said we need to be the holy spirit in the world for the church to shine and be uh, what it is in the world. Pretty good illustration, right? <laughs> well, we do have a few um, announcements for the community. Um, many of you know Maggie Ruff. She was a young lady, young woman, um, who w went into a nursing home at a young age. And um, I guess she's, she's been there for a little while at the Jewish home and have been visiting her out there. Recently, this week, she um, became quite ill and was put into hospice and died. So we're going to have a celebration of her life, her funeral, this Tuesday here. Um, and you're welcome to be here with us at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. The family will be having visitation at 10 in this same space. So we'll keep uh, Maggie's family in our prayers. On the same afternoon, that Tuesday, I'll be walking with a family who lost their baby, their infant. His name is Kyron Jacob Jobert. So please, let's pray for the Jobert family in their grief. And last week, I did a service for, a, for an incredible man. Um, he was a military guy. We went out to um, Indian Town Gap and have you ever been there for one of their celebrations? Whew, pretty powerful stuff when they, shoot, when they do the salute. So Kurt Everett Henderson will be praying for the Henderson family. And then finally, um, Jean approached me to let me know that his cousin died. She was 96. So we're going to pray for Jane McCreary and the McCreary's as they grieve. They won't be here with us on Tuesday because they're laying to her to rest on that day. So let's keep everybody in our community in our prayers. And of course, Memorial Day is when we give thanks to God for those veterans, those who have laid down their lives for us. Um, so I hope that you'll have some time tomorrow maybe to remember those folks in your own family and beyond. Those having birthdays would include my hubby, Happy birthday, Tom. <laughs> Tom Richards is having his birthday this week. And the McCreary's 65 years of marriage. When is the anniversary? Is it today? It's Wednesday. This last Wednesday? Oh, okay. Well, happy anniversary. We're glad that you guys are sticking around with us. These are the names of others that have been um, lifted up for prayer, and you're welcome to share those online, and then Dave will pass others along to me. We're going to pray for Bob, who hurt his shoulder, and we're continuing to pray for his brother Bill and for their son Terry, right? 
We're going to lift up Meg, Ron Carr, Deb Bear, and those are the names that I have. Do I have any others that we need to include? Okay. Hearing no other names, Christy would like to share an announcement. Would you mind coming up here? I know you're not one for standing in front of everybody, but there's a big, wonderful announcement coming, and I want to use the microphone so people who are online can also come. And then they can see what a nice person you look like, what kind of party you're going to have. <laughs> Just an announcement. Um, next week, we're having the unofficial church picnic at our house. Everyone here is invited. Um, there's a sign up on the bulletin board online if you want to come. I guess contact Jim at the office. What time are you starting? Oh, about noon. So come to church, go home, get a little dish, <laughs> come, <laughs> come back to our house. If you need directions or any other questions, just catch me a coffee hour today. Thanks. Thank you, Christy. We love that you do that. Every year they have this really beautiful tree in their yard, and it's kind of like sitting out with your iced tea under a tree. Feels good. All right, are there any other announcements that need to be shared on this day? If not, then let us begin our worship as we stand together and call upon God's name. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. In the waters of baptism. We are been supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you, Lord God, for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life and water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy this world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. We'll remain standing as we sing every time I feel the spirit.
let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending us into your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word. The first reading is from Acts, second verse. When, I, the, when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under God living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native languages of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, are not all of you who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. gospel according to John the 20th chapter glory to you O Lord when it was evening on that day the first day of the week and the doors of the house where where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you after he had said this he showed them his hands and his side then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's kind of funny how we can misinterpret things in this world. At Bible study a couple weeks ago, Anita shared a story with me, with all of us, about a day that her dad, was he in the hospital? He was having a tough day at the hospital. The nursing staff was worried because he was quite agitated and clearly trying to communicate, um, but they couldn't understand him. And... When Anita got there, she said, look, I need a piece of paper and a pen. And she sat next, down, next to her dad and she said, slow down a minute, slow down, because what he was doing was not agitation, he was using sign language. They didn't understand. They couldn't interpret. Eventually she was able to understand him and share with the nurses and the doctors what her dad needed. Did I share the story about right? Close? Okay, good. <laughs> Did you ever learn pig Latin so that your little brother or sister couldn't understand what you were saying? <laughs> Did you do that? Mm -hmm. I think that was a pretty common pattern. Have you ever been in a place where language is used that you don't know what they're saying? That can be very frustrating. It can feel a little overwhelming. You might even think that it sounds like gibberish or, you know, when a, whole, when a baby's like blah, 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 and they're telling you this whole story, but they haven't gotten down the language yet. It's like that. you kind of like, I just wish I could understand what you're telling me. 
According to our story from Acts on that day, a couple thousand years ago, the voices of those who followed Jesus began to share a message of love in languages that they themselves did not know. And those who were around hearing this message thought, something's going on, these people must be drunk. I don't understand, they are clearly not from all those countries where all that language is going out of their mouth. It's gibberish. Of course, when we don't understand something, well, there must be a logical reason they're drunk. Can't be that I can't interpret it. It's just they're messed up. But God chooses to work in mysterious ways. We've heard this before. At least it seems to mysterious to those of us who don't understand God's language. Jesus walks through a locked door and breathes on his disciples, weird in a couple of ways. Have you ever had your brother breathing on you? Last thing you want. Walking through locked doors? Creepy. God has a way of speaking that can kind of unnerve us and make us really upset. Like, for example, not overthrowing the government. That's what we all want, isn't it? I don't like that government. Let's overthrow it. Rome is a mess. They're holding us all down, taxing us out of everything. And what does Jesus do? Mm -mm. I'm going to lay down my life. I have an alternate language called love. We may not understand the ways in which God works, but it doesn't mean that it's unintelligible. To those of us who are willing to actually sit for a minute and listen, we may begin to understand like, like you did with your dad, Anita. Yeah. We may begin to see the patterns and notice that God's trying to say something. Let's take a moment to consider what's happening in that locked room. If we remember all the way back to the Garden of Eden, we have another story of people who are living in fear. And what do they do? They hide. Anybody can go anywhere that God is not? Mm. They too were afraid, and yet God came to them and walked in the garden with them and spoke with them. Jesus enters the same space of fear of a locked room and speaks peace over them. He breathes peace in the Greek, it says, into them. God's Spirit does the same even now among us. God's Spirit speaks and breathes into us. Jesus' desire is to comfort his followers and to send us out into the world to release people from sin. Now, we need to understand something about the Gospel of John. For the Gospel of John isn't... It's not about the bad things you did. Sin in the Gospel of John is neglect to have a relationship with. That's sin. I don't want it. That's sin. When Jesus tells them to forgive that sin, he's sharing peace into the world. He's saying, let go of that brokenness in us. Metanoia, you've heard before in the Greek, means to turn around, to become in right relationship again. Last week you heard me say it's all about relationship, relationship, relationship. Jesus keeps on sharing it every single time Jesus is in a conversation with his people. He says, I want a relationship, and I want it filled with not fear, but I'm breathing what? Peace into you. That's what I want. And Jesus says, that's what you're to bring into this world. He's sending his disciples into the world to let those who live in fear know that God is love, and God's love brings peace into a world of chaos. Just as the Spirit at the beginning of time moved over the chaos and brought order into it. This is God's language, love. 
Jesus speaks it and brings healing, wholeness, comfort to those who live in fear and the grip of sin, the grip of ugh, anguish, separation. Again, for those of us who are longing for relationship, this is what God is breathing into us, peace and healing. For those who fear God or believe that God doesn't love them, Jesus sends us out to speak in a language that that person understands, to release them from that misconception of who God is, to forgive them and set them free from that anguish that they live in, the sense of separation and division. You have a special language that another pe person that you love knows and needs to hear it. it. May sound like gibberish to others, but the love that you personally have and share with your neighbor is the language that they need to hear. You know how to say it with your life. The love that the Spirit moves you to share is just the right language to speak. Sometimes it's not even words, right? It's just what you do. Hugging when somebody's like needing it. Encouraging when they're afraid and worried. Like the relief that Anita's dad had when someone finally understood his despair, those who live around us find relief when we listen to them and respond like Anita did, with comfort, with love, with help, with real help. Pentecost of 2,000 years ago lives today in you. Your language of love speaks God's true love into our world. God sent Jesus into the world that God loves so that those who trust in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The kind of life that is possible right now. One where you are heard, where you are loved right now. One in which you have been called to live into. Everlasting life is the life that relies upon a trustworthy God filled with the spirit, the breath, the movement of peace into places where chaos claims space. You, many of you know Pastor Dent. Elaine and I sit in a Bible study together, and she was there this past week, and she said, one of the, language of the languages of the spirit is forgiveness. And each one of us has our own dialect. We know God's language. It's love. We are sent by Jesus to speak it into a world where fear seems to reign supreme. The Spirit of God is in you and breathes into you and will give you just what to, what to say when it's time to speak. Don't be afraid. You already know what to say and how to love. Jesus showed us what love looks like, laying down your life, conquering death and setting us free to live with an abundant joy. One of, each one of us plays a part in this community. That's the second reading that we had for today. Whatever gift we have, we already have. And we can use it to build up the community, the body of Christ, bringing hope and peace and God's language into the world, the language of love. What gift do you currently have that can be used in this world to build up love? That's what I'll leave you with as we enter into prayer. We thank you, God, for the peace which passes all understanding. Sometimes, even in the middle of chaos, Lord, we get that sense of your presence. Help us to sit and to hear your voice in places where we can't understand the cacophony of noise around us, and it just feels so overwhelming that it feels like the world is going to split apart. Lord, we ask for your breath to move in us at that moment, to calm us, to help us see where you are at work already. Chaos brings change, Lord, and we, we need change, don't we? 
We ask that your spirit change those places in us and in our world so that we can see your love in it. Bless this community as we depart from this time together as a community of prayer and worship of you, that our voices and our actions may live out the love language that you speak to us. It's in your Holy Spirit's name that we pray. Amen. So we have a song for today, As the Wing Song. Let us stand together and sing. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers today. Are there any other prayers for today? Oh, sorry. Okay. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equipped the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destruct destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. For this morning, we include in our prayers Peggy Warmkessel, Anita, and Joanne Painter, Hannah, Karen Kaler, Woody Isher, Trudy Stum, Loey Parker, Steve Nock, Judy Hunt, Edsel, Debbie Aldrich, the Holden family, Anna, Kathy Miller, Marty Pano, Jenny's mom and her sister, Marty and Paul Sheffer, Ken, Judy Smith and family, Bob and Maggie Fogelman, Gladys, Sonia, Jeff and Jody Rice, Marie and Lucy. We also include Pam Murray, Bob, Bill, Terry, Meg, Ron Carr, Deb Bear. And those we name in our hearts now. Hear us, O oh God. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through outreach ministries of our synod and community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who've died to new life in you. We pray especially for the families of Maggie Ruff, Kyron Jacob Jobert, Kurt Everett Henderson, and Jane McCreary. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn. Usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We also pray for those celebrating, including Tom and the McCrary's on their anniversary. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. For those of you joining us online, we encourage you to say, peace be with you, and we'll make sure that we get a note back to you. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
Please stand for the blessing. <clears throat> the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen.